What's up guys? In this video, we're learning about how to find the surface area of a cone. Alright, so let's consider an ice cream cone, except without the actual ice cream, of course. So this is what a cone looks like. Its surface wraps around, and the bottom is a circle. And yes, this circle is also part of the surface area of the cone. All right, so the question you've probably been begging to know the answer for is, how do we find the surface area of a cone? Well, the formula is simple. The surface area of a cone is equal to base area of the cone plus lateral area of the cone. The base area of a cone is simply a circle. The area of a circle, as you might already know by now, is pi r squared, where r is the radius of the circle. The lateral area of a cone is everything else other than the base area. The formula for this is pi r s, where s is the slant height of the cone. Do note that this is different from the actual height of a cone. The slant height will be a little bit longer than the actual height. So if we add these areas together, we get the total surface area. So, Without further ado, let's try a question. Well, here we have ourselves a cone. Good. First things first, if we've memorized our surface area of a cone formula, then we can just start by busting that out right here. The slant height, or this S, shall I say, is seven centimeters. The radius, or the R over here, is five centimeters. Good. So if we plug in our values, we've got pi times 5 squared plus pi times 5 times 7. If we simplify, we get pi times 25 or 25 pi plus pi times 35 or 35 pi. Therefore, 25 pi plus 35 pi equals 60 pi, which is roughly, when we round it to the 10th digit, 188.5 centimeters squared. Great. Let's try another example. All right. Before we move further, we need to see the difference between this question and the previous one. The previous question gave us the values of the radius and slant height. This question, however, gives us the radius and the height of the cone itself. Here is our formula for the surface area of a cone. Now what can we do about the fact that this s over here is supposed to be plugged in with the value of the slant height and not the height of the cone itself? Should we just plug it in there and hope that magically things happen and that no one notices? No way. That's not what a true nerd would do. Let's take a look at what we've got here. This here is a 90 degree angle. That makes these two the legs of a right angle triangle, where this slant is the hypotenuse. Now, do you remember the Pythagorean theorem? Well then, let's pull up what we remember. a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are legs, and c is the hypotenuse. So what we have if we plug our values in is 4 centimeters squared plus 6 centimeters squared equals c squared. Simplify to get 16 plus 36 which equals 52. We have 52 equals c squared in which we square root both sides to get square root 52 equals c. So the length of the slant is square root 52. So let's write in the square root of 52 here and move on with our formula for finding the surface area of a cone. If we fill in the rest of the variables into the equation here and simplify, we get a result of roughly 140.88 centimeters squared. Not too hard, right? Let's try one more example. Okay, so we want to get the surface area of this right here. But the problem is that if we just get the surface area of an entire cone, then we will have added this amount, which shouldn't be added, 
and we would not have added this part right here, which should be added. So how would we do this? All right, let's think this through just so that we're really clear about what our objective is here. We will start by getting the surface area of the entire cone first. Then we will need to subtract this part over here, which is the lateral surface of the small cone. And then we will need to include this part over here into our surface area calculations. This area here can be seen as the base area for the small cone. And as a result, we find out what the surface area of this part is, which was our original objective. So we've effectively created a general formula for ourselves to find the total area of this section here. So how do we find the total surface area of the entire cone? Well, we know that the formula for a cone is pi times r squared plus pi r s. But since we have the dimensions for both the large cone and the small cone, we need to differentiate which one we are talking about. So we will label these r's here with a subscripted l as well as this s since we want to find the area of the large cone. Now, what's the lateral area of the small cone? Well, the lateral area is just this part right here. And we know that the formula for finding the lateral area is pi r s. But instead of looking at the large radius and large slant height, we should be looking at the small radius and small slant height. So we'll denote these variables with subscripted s for both. Lastly, what's the base area of the small cone? Well, we know it's pi r squared, but we need to be more specific and refer to it as pi times r s squared to represent the small base. That leaves us with this equation here that might look a little bit crazy, but it's really not. And I need to stress this right now. You don't need to memorize any of this. This is just problem solving on the fly and figuring things out. And I'll come to realize how important this is for doing well in university and beyond. Good. Well, let's pull up the dimensions to get a better idea of what we're working with. So we are given the radius for both the large cone and the small cone. Let's plug that in first. If we simplify the squares, and rearrange it, we have 25 times pi plus 5 times pi times s large minus 3 times pi times s small plus 9 times pi. Okay, let's figure out the slant heights now. We're given both the height and the radius of the small and large cones. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the slant heights for both of them starting with the large cone. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We plug in our values for a and b with 5 and 10, respectively. We get 5 squared plus 10 squared equals c squared. 5 squared is 25 plus 10 squared, which is 100, equals c squared. When we add 25 and 100, we get 125 equals c squared. Let's square root both sides to get square root 125 equals c. So the slant height for the large cone is square root of 125. Now, let's find the slant height for the small cone. So again, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We plug in our values for a and b with 3 and 4 respectively. We get 9 plus 16 equals c squared. We add 9 and 16 to get 25 equals c squared. Let's square root both sides to get square root 25 equals c. We can simplify this down to 5 since we know that 25 is a perfect square. Good. So now that we have all our values, let's plug these numbers back into the equation that we made for ourselves. Now if we simplify all this by putting it into our calculator, we get a final value of roughly 235.31 centimeters squared as our total surface area for this section. Awesome!
The key here is to know that the surface area of a cone is made up of two portions that are added together. We've got the base area, which is the area of a circle. And then we've got everything else wrapping around it called the lateral area. Once we understand that, we're able to answer questions like the one that we just did. Well, that's it for this lesson on surface area of cones, and we will see you in the next one.